And about 4 o'clock that morning, so my alarm went off, so that's when I usually get up, get ready for work and whatnot. So I get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, deodorant, all that kind of good stuff. I don't really take a shower because I work in the field, but like, I'll take a shower when I get home, that thing. And uh, she told me the, the, when before she got in that like I want to wake up, you know, like when you get up, just like take a shower, get the airport off, me type thing. So like I woke her up about after I got ready and everything, and then we had to talk about like the selling the house and about separation and stuff like that. Like it was an emotional conversation. Obviously, we were both crying, and after we talked, it was. She said she's going to take the kids to a friend's house, and that should be back later on that day. So it's like, okay, that's fine. So I went downstairs and back my lunch and filled my water jug and got my computer and everything and loaded my truck up and I went to work. And then I got, once I got to work, started started working in about 7, 7.40 or so. So I texted her like, hey, you know, I heard from her. I was like, okay, like, I know where she was going. Like, I didn't know what friend's house she was taking to or where she, what, what friends she was going to with the kids. So I was like, hey, you know, text me, you know, let me know where, where you went, where you took the kids. And I didn't hear from her. Like, it's normal for her not to respond to me because, like, when she has her direct sales, direct sales people, like, she'll get back to them first because, like, that, that's what she does. Mm-hmm. So like if for her like not to respond back to me, uh, that's uh, that's happened plenty of times before. So I'm um, continue working and I know like it's about noon. She hasn't got back to me like hey you know call me. Like I called her a few I called her once before that too. And then about 12 10 that's when I got a door bell alarm on my phone saying someone was at the front door and I was in the cold. And uh, so I called her and I was like hey what's going on? So I got her from Shanann like all day no text no calls and I'm like right, this is kind of strange. So, like, Nicole was out the front door, and she's like, okay, her car's here, I can see her shoes, like, because we have this little, little rectangular long window next to the door. And she could see her shoes right there and whatnot, she's like, all right, something, something's going on. So, like, she called me, she was like, all right, like, I can't get a hold of her, something's going on. And that's when I came home. That's when I started, that's when I left to come home. So, um, Nicole called me, she's like, all right, I'm just, there's, there's going to be a police officer here when you get here. I'm like, okay. Like, I was, the kids, they couldn't get in because the latch from the top door was that's what, that's what we kind of put over just to make sure like you know like if the kids try to go out the front door they can because that's there but the keypad on the outside of the garage door doesn't work so like they had to wait until i got there i got the, the garage door opener i hit it we went inside the house and i mean cars there car seats are there purse is still there phone the phone's on the couch like her wedding ring sitting on the nightstand and it's like there's like no sign of Bella, Celeste, or anywhere. And it's like the police officer, I forget what the police officer's name was, but he was there and he was just, just once we found the phone, powered it up. And all the text messages like came through as far as everybody was reaching out to her and everything. Like, hey, what's going on? Like, are you okay? Everything good? And there's just like, there's nothing there. Like, it was just like, it was a ghost town. And everything that was there just didn't make sense as far as like why, like, what happened. So we started like reaching out to a bunch of people. 